Hi! In this tutorial I'll show you how you can use copy stamping and for loops and I'll show you how to set up the same system in both of them. Both are great for adding randomization to your assets, but first a big note. In the official documentation it says, quote, copy stamping is no longer the recommended way to create variations when copying to points. Using a for each loop and attributes instead is more efficient easier to set up and easier to understand." End quote. So if you don't specifically need copy stamping, I would rather use for loops. Th there is not much difference in setting up the system, but for loops are more powerful and versatile and you can do a lot more with them. Plus they should be more faster and stable. So let's get to it! Alright, so first the copy stamp version. Now, first we're gonna create some grid where we're gonna copy our points to. We can use some, some tube to make something like a cone so you can clearly see the direction. Let's make the radius zero and we can also scale it down a little bit and cap the ends. Doesn't matter too much for this example. And we can also use a, a transform node to rotate them so they're pointing upwards. All right. So we have it set it up. And now important thing is to check stamp inputs, otherwise it won't work. Now we create our own variable, which we're going to stamp and we want some random numbers and we're going to base it on a point number because that always changes. So, and now if we're going to stamp it to, let's say, uh, X rotation first you can uh, type stamp, then the path to the node we were, which you want to get the stamp from and then the name of the variable and then zero is the default value if, if, if nothing's gonna happen. So and now you can see something changes but that's not a lot and that's because random generates a number from zero to one which means we get rotation from 0 to 1 degrees which is not a lot so we can fit it to a wider range for example minus 20 and 20 and now now you see like our cones are randomly rotated in the x direction yeah, I should have chosen a better name for that Okay, and now this might be a little inconvenient to like change the values. It would be better to have a slider so we can make our custom one. So we'll just drag and drop a float into into our tabs, and we name the parameters something like minimum z and maximum z, whatever. You can specify your own names use your label which will describe this uh, value something like maximum z although it's the x rotation but you can change it if you want to and now if you go to the stamp tab you see we have our own custom parameters so we can just uh, copy parameter and paste them instead of that uh, 20 minus 20 based around the reference and do the same for for the maximum z and now we can control the maximum and minimum random rotation by our sliders as you can see now we can also uh, make another one for the actual Z rotation, which I'm gonna... Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm gonna flip it, so I'm gonna use X. And the thing is, you don't want to reuse the same n number for the random values, which is in this case the point number. So um, it's you if you want to get a new set of random rotations, just add some some random number to it, and you'll get like a different seed. So now the rotations are different, and they're still controlled by the sliders. Okay, so let's put some reason more reasonable values in here. And that's that. Now, so this is the compy stamping method. All right, and let's do the for loop version now. For the most part, it's the same. You just uh, create a grid. You, but now the difference is you have to create a for loop. We will create for each point loop. So this will take each point and do the same steps for it and we are going to paste our uh, copy stamp node into it and let's just create the same cone so we, we can clearly see, see the rotation let's make it a bit smaller so they don't overlap each other as much just put it in okay and now as you can see like you get uh, the same cones for for each point so the same as we that had before now the tricky part is to create a meta import node so you get uh, now you can use the number of iterations so instead we can't use uh, point numbers now because in the loop uh, when it takes the point it consider it as always as the z zero on the first point so we can't use that for our random value but we can use the iterations and how, how do we get that it's it's stored as a detail so when we when we're gonna uh, create a random value we just use uh, the detail for for creation of the random number so so how do we do that? We'll use a, a function called detail. Now we have to point to the node where we get it, want to get it from, which is our for each begin metadata. That's the one. And now we'll just uh, call, say which parameter we want. We want iteration, and if nothing, if there's nothing, let's just take zero. And here you see, like now now we get rotation based on the iteration so the higher the iteration the bigger the rotation okay but now we we would like to have a random value so we'll just put it in our random function we can also add some seed and just a preparation for the other dimension and we want to fit it to the same range let's say minus 30 and 30 and there we go we have the same random rotation on our cones we can also put it into the z rotation just just change the seat so it's the same and now we have our are randomly rotated cones so we have the same as with the copy stamp stamping method and if you want to do want, want to see like which happen what happens in each pass you can just isolate it with this checkbox okay and uh, here's a final tip uh, let's say you want to have more layers and you want to have them all randomly rotated well now now we can't just use the same expression and plug it in into a next for loop you need to update the random expression because if you wouldn't use it you would get the same random rotation on each layer so the thing how to do it is just plug it into a next uh, for each loop and you have to add some 
you have to add, add another iteration iterations from the other for loop to your expression so it it's it adds something else to the number so it's not always the same so you get this uh, random rotation for each layer all right guys thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial